board. So good morning, grade 12 students. And this presentation or this video, we're going to talk about our new chapter, which is about the MyPet Preflex, chapter 10. So let's start. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the myopathic reflex. Myopathic reflex, chapter 10, on page 400. Before we start, let's know what is the myopathic reflex. Myopathic reflex is the contraction of the muscle in response to its stretching. So the muscle contracts in response to its stretching. So we have two kinds of the myopathic reflex. This is a patellar reflex or Achillean reflex. To start with, we have to know some terms. Flexion, extension. Flexion and extension, they are opposite each other. Extension and flexion, they are used for the limbs, while contraction and relaxation or stretching, or when they are the same meaning, they are used for muscles. First of all, you have to know this. Flexion and extension, they are used for the limbs, while contraction, relaxation, or stretching, you know that, for example, before uh, exercise or sports or something, you have to be stretching, stretching the muscle or contraction of the muscle. Why flexion and extension? They are used for the limbs. Uh, flexor muscle, extensor muscle. What is the meaning of flexor muscle? Flexor muscle is the muscle whose contraction goes as its name indicates, flexion. Why extensor muscle, whose contraction goes as its name indicates, extension. So this is the difference between the flexor muscle, extensor muscle. Flexor muscle, whose contraction goes flexion and Extensor muscle, whose contraction, whose extension. Let's move to Dr. Juan, maintaining motion. This one is a clinical study about the studies on the myopathic reflex. So this one of them is called the patellar tendon. Here, the knee joint, they have the hammer here, and they knock the hammer on the Achillean tendon. So we have extension of the root of the foot. So let's move to the third paragraph. The generation of certain structures found in the muscle. They are called a neuromuscular spindles. So we have degeneration, in that killing these neuromuscular spindles of the triceps serrate. So uh, the degeneration of the neuromuscular spindles and the triceps serrate, this is the triceps serrate. Okay, this found at the, uh, the front of the foot. It's called extensor muscle of the leg. It's called triceps serrate. You can write it as TS, triceps serrate. So this part at the front of the leg. So degeneration of certain structures, neuromuscular spindle of the triceps ray make the Achillean reflex disappear. So this reflex of the foot, whenever we have of the hammer at the front of the foot, this reflex disappear. What does this mean? This means that the neuromuscular spindles, they are responsible or they are involved or they are found in this reflex. Okay, moving to a document C. Document C, Purgation of the tension in the muscle as a function of its stretching. Let's see here. Whenever we have no stretching, when the stretching was about zero, the tension of the muscle was about 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 kilogram. So whenever you have no stretching and we have tension, this is called muscular tonicity. So in the absence of stretching, we have tension of about 0 0.2 gram found here. So, kilograms, sorry. So, this is called a muscular tenacity. When the stretching of the muscle increases from zero to about 0 0.8 centimeter, this is 0 0.8 centimeter at this seizure. So, we're working at this axis from zero to 0 0.8 centimeter, less than one. The tension increases about 2.8 to 2.9 kilogram. And this stretching is maintained at 0 0.8 uh, centimeter. The tension gradually decreases and becomes constant at about 2.2 to 2.3. What does this mean? This means that the muscle responds to its own stretching by making the tension, which is the contraction. So it responds by the, to the stretching by a contraction. This, what do we call it? And this is the definition of the myotatic reflex. So this is the definition of the myotatic reflex. So you have to know this, myotatic reflex is the response of the muscle, as you see here, we have the definition, is the contraction of the muscle in response to its stretching. So whenever we have stretching here, the muscle contract. So this is called the muscular, uh, this is called the myotatic reflex. So this is the first note you have to know. This is the first note you have to study also. 
The said in part three, Achillean reflex is a myotatic one. Why? Because the muscle contract on its stretching, so it's called a myotatic reflex. The center of the Achillean reflex, you have to know it. The center of the myotatic reflex or the Achillean reflex is the spinal cord. It's still, whenever we have a spinal animal, so it's the center of this is the spinal cord. This is the main ideas of the front end chapter. Uh, in activity one, it is about the uh, maintaining culture. So let's move to document two. Document two about the anatomy of the reflex. We have anatomy of the reflex. Anatomy of the reflex, talking about the page 206, anatomy is structure of the spinal cord. The center of the spinal cord is the nerve center. There's an extension of the encephalon. It's embedded inside the spinal duct of the vertebral column, and it's related to the organs of the trunk and the limbs by about 31 spinal nerves. Each nerve is connected to this center by two roots, ventral root and dorsal root. So let's move here to the experiment that's done by Bell and Majindi. It's done on dogs to enable us to study the direction of the nerve message in the roots of the spinal nerve. This is a very important experiment in the nervous system. Majindi and Bell experiment. Mainly it's called Majindi experiment. So, Results of Bell and Magenta experiment. Pay attention to this experiment. Also, this notes or this indication, you have to know that. Let's see here, section of the ventral root. We have section at the ventral root. And we stimulate at the peripheral end. Whenever we had a, a, a stretching section of the ventral root and stimulation of the peripheral end, what is the result? Muscle contraction of, the re, of re, this region. While whenever we have stimulation at the central end, there is no response. What does this mean? This indicates that the ventral root carries the message or the nervous message in a centrifugal manner at the end. Why? The opposite is true. Let's move to the section of the dorsal root. Dorsal root, we have a section of the dorsal root. Section of the dorsal root, and we have stimulation of the central end. There is pain. Why? Section of the dorsal root and stimulation of the peripheral end, there is no response, meaning that. The, message center, the nervous message in the dorsal root moved in a centripetal direction towards the spinal cord. That's why we have the sensation and feeling of pain. So these modes, you have to study that. You have to know that. In the case of the sectioning of the pontoon root, the stimulation of the peripheral end leads to muscular contraction. While stimulation on the central end, there is no response. What does this indicate? This indicates that ventral root carries the nervous message in a centrifugal direction. You have to know this and you have to study this. The ventral root carries the message in the centrifugal direction. Why? In the case of the dorsal root, the stimulation of the central end induces pain. While the stimulation of the peripheral, there is no response. Meaning that the dorsal root carries the message in a centripetal direction towards the center. And we have to know that the last uh, experiment, they have a uh, destruction of section of the spinal curve. There is no, so spinal nerve has a mixed function, motor and sensory one. Uh, let's move now to the some notes. Extrafusal muscle fibers, they are contractile, meaning that they are innervated by fibers, they're called alpha motor fibers. While intrafusal, they are contractile only at the extremities. So only at the extremities, they are contractile and they are inverted by gamma motor fibers. At rest, Gamma uh, motor fibers, they maintain a certain level of activity that uh, causes the contraction of the extremity of the interfusal, which will eventually lead to the touching of the middle region. So these notes, you have to know them. Muscular tonicity, already we talked about this, but here I put the definition. Touching will be detected by the sensory neuron that carry the message. We said that the sensory neuron carry the message toward the central nervous system, which will send an excitatory message toward through the alpha motor fibers to the extra fusion muscle fibers that will contract. This is the cause of slight muscular contraction. Whenever we have muscular contraction, right, the case in activity one, we have tension. Whenever we have uh, at rest, there is no touching. So this is called muscular tonicity. So you have to know this notes before we start. Uh, let's move now to part two in the probing document. Justify the following statement. The ventral root of the spinal nerve is motor and the dorsal root is sensory already. We discovered this and already we uh, solved this part. Let's move now 
to document A. Why do we say that the muscle is receptor and effector organ? The muscle uh, is called the receptor and the effector organ. Why? So the muscle contains two types of fibers of different function, either interfusal, as I said, surrounded by sensory nerve fibers, forming the neuromuscular system, which is in the sensory, or extrafusal, which are contractile that receive motor nerve fibers, effector function. So the muscle at the same time has interfusal and extrafusal, sensory motor. So it has both. It's called a scepter and an effector organ. That's why, because it contains two types of fiber. Number four, it's talking about the experiment that's found in this figure, in figure eight. So here, identification of the role of the neuromuscular spindle. Here, let's talk about this. An isolated muscle having intact, having uh, intact nerve connection with the spinal cord is subjected to modification in its length. Using an oscilloscope, we record the electric activity of the two sensory fibers shown in document F. We have length of the muscle, resting muscle, stretch one, contracted one. Here, they are showing the frequency of the actual potential in the sensory nerve fiber originating from the neuromuscular spindle. Here, they are showing the frequency of the actual potential in the sensory nerve fiber originating from the Golgi tendon organ. So, when the muscle is at rest, the frequency of the action potential is very weak. So we have frequency is very weak. Okay? When the muscle is stretched, the frequency will increase. And it becomes zero in the case of contraction. We have no frequency. The Golgi tendon organ doesn't show any action potential when it's at, at rest, when the muscle is stretched or contracted. So here we can say that at rest, it's not active. The Golgi tendon is sensitive. The Golgi tendon is sensitive to stretching and contraction. In the case of Golgi tendon, we have only action potential in the case of stretching or in the case of contraction, while there is nothing at rest. This is the aim of this experiment. So when the muscle is at rest, the frequency of APS action potential in the neuromuscular spindle fiber is weak. This frequency increases in the case of stretching and becomes zero. You see here we have the space here, so here we have, don't have an actual potential here, and become zero in the case of contraction. Hence, the spindle is sensitive to stretching, since we have the highest action potential and frequencies in the case of action, in the highest frequency, sorry, in the case of stretching. Moving to the Golgi tendon, the second row, the Golgi tendon only doesn't show any action potential except when the mother is either stretched or it is contracted. So at rest, it's not active. There is no action potential. So here we can say that the Golgi tendon organ is sensitive to stretching and a contraction. It's specific for the muscle tension. So as you see here, whenever we have extension or we have stretching or contraction, we have action potential. That we have frequency of the action potential. While here, in the case of resting muscle, the sensory Golgi tendon organ shows no action potential. So it's sensitive for stretching and for contraction. This is the ideas and uh, document two. So you have to know that the ventral root has a motor function since the sectioning of the ventral root leads to the loss of the motor activity and to the maintenance of the sensibility. You have sensibility. So the motor has a, a ventral root, sorry, has a motor function. And the sectioning of the dorsal root leads to the total loss of sensibility and to the maintenance of the motor activity so total uh, those of you has a sensory function. You have to know this. And for four already we saw this. Document three, talking about the reflex coming. Activity of the antagonistic muscles. What the meaning of antagonistic muscles? Antagonistic muscles, we said that antagonists, they have opposite functions. And every one muscle contract, the other relaxes. So this is called antagonist muscles. Activity of the antagonist muscles. In the reflex activity, as in voluntary one, many muscles, they are involved. Some contract and others relax, thus allowing the movement. So whenever you have to move, all muscles, they don't have all of them to contract. Some of them to contract, other they have to relax. Using this setup shown in document A, we can stimulate, uh, we can simultaneously record the activity of both muscles of the legs. Triceps ray, this is the triceps ray, front, and the tibialis anterior, 
this triceps array is extensor muscle, those contraction code extension, and tibialis anterior, those contraction code flexion. So these are two muscles, triceps array, TS, and tibialis anterior, TA. Uh, during alternative voluntary movement of flexion and extension of the foot, shown and documented. This is electromyography, electromyogram of the triceps ray number one is for triceps ray and number two for the tibialis interior during the movement of the foot. Let's see here. Whenever we have contraction of the tibialis interior, here we have relaxation and the opposite true. Whenever we have contraction of the triceps ray, here we have relaxation. Also relaxation here, contraction here, contraction here, relaxation here. So they move in opposite direction. One contract, the other relaxes. So this is explained by the antagonistic muscle. So they are antagonists. Moving to paragraph two, coordination of the muscular activity. During Achilles reflex or metatic reflex, the percussion of the Achilles tendon provokes the extension of the stretching of the foot. This movement is the result of contraction of the extensor, the triceps array, contraction, and the extension or the relaxation of its antagonist, which is tibialis, Interior. The coordination is states the intervention of polysynaptic neuronic pathway. This is the polysynaptic neuronal pathway consists of two pathways, either afferent or efferent. So here is the stimulus. We have, for example, the hammer. We have the hammer in this region, this region of the foot. We have the response, extension of the foot. So here we have two muscles. We have tibialis anterior and we have the triceps. So right. So we have here two muscles, a parent pathway, two muscles or two circles, a parent pathway and if parent. A parent is sensory, it's from the stimulated, originating from the stimulated muscles toward the central nervous system. And we have if parent one that has direct relation with something called alpha motor fibers. These alpha motor fibers or alpha motor fibers or alpha motor neurons that are found here in order to cause the uh, reaction to reach to the anterior neuron, the polysynaptic level. So here we have excitatory or inhibitory. So the message is going to be transmitted through afferent toward the anterior neuron, toward the uh, anterior neuron and the alpha motor neuron, which causes the muscle, the message to be sent back in the centrifugal mass toward the muscle and cause the reaction. Negative feedback system. So negative feedback, similar to the feedback shown in the lessons uh, that we have started before, the elongation of the muscle provokes its contraction, its shortening, its hence the response is opposite to the stimulus that goes in. So this is called the uh, negative feedback. Every skeletal muscle possesses two systems, one concerning the length of the neuromuscular spindle, the other with the tension of the Golgi tendon. Both of them, they have played a role in protection of the muscle against excessive elongation or Attention. Let's see here control of the reflex action by the superior centers. Using this setup shown in document E, we recall the electric, electric activity of the triceps ray TS during an anterior reflex and the three situations. We have three situations. The software used permits the superposition on the screen of the recording obtained in three experimental situations. The first recording corresponds to a normal Achino reflex. The other two recordings, they correspond to two situations during which the person contracts the tibialis anterior voluntarily in a manner more or less intense before hitting his tendon with the reflex hammer that we use it before. So in this document, we have the uh, <clears throat> electromyogram show of the triceps ray showing voluntary modification of the myotatic reflex. The other one we have a non-contracted tibialis interior. Violet, slightly contracted. And the blue is highly contracted. So response, they have the same shape, but they have different amplitude. The amplitude of the response decreases with the decrease, with the increase, decrease, sorry, decreases with the increase of the tension. So let's see, the blue one has the lowest amplitude. The violet has higher, and the yellow one, whenever you have no contraction, is the highest amplitude. So you have to know that this response decreases with the increase in the contraction. So as the largest was the non-contracted one, and the largest 
with the yellow one. Whenever you have no contractiles, P8, the pialis inferior, and it decreases in the violet and becomes very weak. And even though it's negative, in the case of the yellow one, so this so that reflex can be inhibited by intervention of something called superior nerve center. Therefore, the superior nerve center can control the Achillean reflex or the reflex arcs here. So we have to know this. So let's move to the correction of this exercise. Uh, correction of this exercise shows that the electromyogram shows responses about the same shape or four. So they have the same shape, but different amplitude. The amplitude of the response, it decreases with the increase of the tension of the contraction and the contracted tibialis interior. It's the largest with the non-contracted tibialis interior. When the tibialis interior was not contracted, it was the largest. And the weakest, and even though it negatively the one with the yellow one, with highly contracted, with the tibialis interior was highly contracted. This shows that the reflex can be modulated or can be inhibited by the intervention of superior nerve center, which is the brain here. Therefore, the superior nerve center can control the reflex arc. Uh, <clears throat> in the case when the center nerve, uh, superior nerve center doesn't interfere when the tibialis interior is not contracted, this is the explanation of this electromyogram. The alpha motor fibers receive only excitatory motion. That's why you have a high peak, a high amplitude. So in the case when the superior nerve center doesn't interfere, the pialis interior is not contracted, the alpha motor fibers of the extensor muscles receive only excitatory muscles. What do we call it? It's called EPSP, excitatory postsynaptic potential. And the apparent unit of the same muscle. This will create an axon potential in the axon of the alpha motor neuron, causing the contraction of the muscle and extension of the foot. While when the tibialis interior is slightly contracted, which is the violet one, alpha motor fibers receive two nerve muscles. One excitatory, APSP, arriving from the apparent, another one inhibitory, arriving from the SNC, polysynaptic circuit. That's why the muscle is going to be lower or smaller in amplitude. The alpha motor neuron uh, integrate this message as the excitatory message is more important, it's going to be positive and it's going to be an action potential with lower amplitude that leads to slight contraction of triceps ray, tension of the foot. Why? When the tibialis interior is highly contracted, which is the yellow one, alpha motor fiber receives two nerve muscles. One excitatory IPSP and one inhibitory, which is IPSP. So the IPSP is more important. This much is more important. So this will not generate an action potential and the muscle does not contract and we do have no extension of the foot. So here we don't have an extension of the foot. Hope everything is well here. Hope you understand every single note and hope you, this idea is are explained well in this chapter. So uh, here we finish everything related to chapter 10. Next week, inshallah, we're going to continue with chapter 12, talking about the neurotransmitters and others. So thank you and see you soon.